Reddit, what are your funniest drunk people stories? Once at a 7 to 11 at 3 a.m. when I was around 17, a drunk black man was celebrating the just elected Obama, saying now we got one in IMA run FO office. S, IMA make it legal to drink at 18. I white boy you gonna vote for me? I was with my black friend and we were like hell yeah and he was like, S him a win already. He then walked outside, noticed a cop then yelled I know you but I don't know if I know you from school or prison. He then started running. Good times. I wasn't much a drinker back in high school, but when my class went on a school trip to Boston, we stayed in a youth hostel. A few of us were up late in the lounge area when the manager comes in pissed drunk, sits down and gives an eerie, glassy glare. After a few minutes of silence, he looks at me and says, ask me if I'm a tree. Me, are you a tree? He breaks out in horribly loud belly laughter, falls over on his side and snorts through his guffaws. Of course I'm not a tree, you idiot. Do I look like AF tree? Then he passed out on the floor. Myself and a few friends were out at a beach house we have and having a good time. Everyone got really drunk and passed out before me. I finish my smoke outside and come back in. Right at that time my buddy stands up from the couch in a drunken sleepwalking state, pulls down his pants, sits on the coffee table, and pisses everywhere. I just about died laughing and took as much of a video as I could. It was the most random and hilarious s I've ever seen. I was drunk on my 21st birthday and thought I was being smooth as I was talking to this girl at the bar. All of a sudden, I hear this booming voice from down the bar, what the f do you think you're doing? I'm her boyfriend. I look, and this big dude is staring right at me. I replied, yeah, well I am her new man friend, buddy. He looks me dead in the eye and yells, you better get your f fingers out of my jello. I couldn't help but laugh my ass off at the comment, and he ends up buying me a shot and wishing me a happy birthday instead of taking the tough guy route that he very well could have, and a lot of guys would have felt obligated to, he saw the situation for what it was. I was a drunk fool on my 21st birthday, and he bought me a shot instead of trying to fight me for hitting on his girlfriend and mouthing off to him. It is still one of the funniest terms I can think of when someone is hitting on another person's significant other. Get your fingers out of my jello. This'll get buried further down than dead people, but here it goes. Back in March break, my friend was having a typical party. Just a small group of friends, eight people, drinking having a fun night. Sometime in the middle of the night, one of my friends passes out on the couch and he's out for the night. A bunch of us stayed up until 6 a.m. At about 8 or so, we drive down the road to Timmy's, coffee shop for the non-Canadians, and pick up a few things like breakfast and muffins. When we get back, our friend is still passed out on the couch. So another friend brings him a muffin. In his drunken, barely awakeness, he say oh my god, this is so perfect. Thank you, puts the muffin down and passes right back out. The rest of us head back to the basement, and when we checked on him an hour or so later, the muffin was gone, but he never woke up to eat it. We still have no idea what happened to the muffin. Totally a funnier because it happened to me moment. TL, DR, gave a friend a muffin, he puts it down. Harry Muffini escapes and is never found again. Once at a resort for a family member's wedding, my dad and I met a drunk man in an elevator. We had already pushed the button for our four, six, and the man stumbled in and stared at the buttons for a moment. He began pressing the metal number corresponding to his four's button, five, and after a few failed attempts he decided to try the button. When the doors opened on four or five there was an awkward pause because the man didn't realize that this was his stop, so my dad grabbed my arm and pulled me out of the elevator. We ran down to the stairs at the other end of the hall and went up to our floor and watched the drunk man try to get into someone else's room for about ten minutes. When I was a senior in high school, we had the opportunity to go on a school trip to Italy. A few of my friends also went, which was awesome. We weren't technically allowed to drink, but we were given ample free time to go sightseeing or buy souvenirs, which we spent drinking on patios or in bars. Here are my favorite stories. The glass blowing incident in Venice. On our first day in Italy, we went to Venice. It was about 11 AM and we were given some free time, but had to meet up around 2 PM to go to a glass blowing shop. My group of friends and I hit up a restaurant, ate pizza, and drank beer in the sun. At 1.45, we were all pretty drunk when we got to this glass blowing shop with the rest of our school group. We watched a guy make a horse out of liquid glass in less than a minute, and we were all amazed. The tour guide mentioned that they could create some pretty expensive glass pieces. We then went to see the store above the shop and quickly realized that everything was expensive as heck, and we were like a proverbial drunken bull in a china shop. My one obnoxiously drunk friend, we'll call him Matt, picked up an elaborate wine jug with a stopper. As he was looking for the price on top, he tilted the jug, and the stopper fell out. The stopper broke a matching wine glass underneath and shattered. 
The store fell deathly silent, and after a pause that seemed like an eternity, Matt looked up from the broken glass on the floor with a stupid grin on his face and said, that was 200 euros, and erupted in laughter, which was followed by the rest of us laughing very nervously. Luckily, he didn't have to pay for it, but we were promptly escorted out of the store and given a slap on the wrist by our teacher. The leather working shop in Florence. Later in the trip, we went to Florence. The night before, we had been very drunk and were still quite drunk in the morning, especially after some hangover breakfast beers. One of the places we went to visit was a leather working shop. The lady giving us the tour explained that the leather the street vendors try to sell is fake and showed us that real leather won't burn. Street vendors will try to prove that their leather doesn't burn by waving a lighter underneath their merch. The lady giving the presentation then said, but that works on me too, and waved a lighter under her hand, saying, see, I'm not burnt, to which my friend, we'll call him Harrison, exclaimed, she's a witch. Burn her. The rest of this poor girl's tour was ruined by stupid comments and questions from the rest of our group, asking things like, so wait, does this mean that you're made out of leather? That was the last school trip the supervising teacher ever made outside of Canada. So, I was at a party in Oklahoma, I am from Missouri. I play rugby and we were partying with the other team, being nice and having a good time. Then one of my teammates, Black Luke, passes out in the front yard, cops are cold. My entire team and the OU team sprint out of the house jumping slash plowing through fences until we think we are far enough away from the police. Three of us wander off to Papa John's. Whilst there we pick a fight with the Fiji, fraternity, pledge, who calls his entire pledge class to try and take us, fighting ensues. My teammates and I pretty much keep the fight tied for being outnumbered and eventually make it back to the party, where we find four of our teammates eating peanut butter off of a girl's foot, in order to become pirates. We all eventually pass out at the house. Next morning we wake up to our captain kicking in the door screaming I woke up and all I saw was bushes. It's time to go. We all packed up and got out of Oklahoma. So, enter Hot Dog Day weekend, a school-sponsored excuse to get wasted. We were having a party that was spilling out onto our apartment's lawn. There were approximately 30 to 50 people there, and it was a grand old time. Some background info, we had this rule called shirtless o'clock wherein if someone asks you what time it is, and you say shirtless o'clock, everyone at the party must remove their shirt or face ridicule. Usually, this didn't work very well. We'd end up with 15 shirtless men and one woman brave enough to show her bra while the rest just giggled at us. However, at this party, it worked perfectly, and not a single person kept their shirt on. Naturally, us spilling out onto the lawn attracted some attention. Enter the lax bro. A monster of a man, twice as broad as I am and about the same height, he could smell the debauchery from a mile away. He sauntered into our courtyard and tried to hit on any shirtless girl he could find. Meanwhile, my lovely friend Radu, his boyfriend, and another friend plus girlfriend combo showed up. Radu is a bit of a flamer, and on this occasion was wearing a masquerade mask, hot pants, and rainbow suspenders. He was carrying a neon pink umbrella. The lax bro was drawn away from two girls kissing when he saw this outfit and turned to Radu and asked, H-U-I, are you AF? Radu naturally responded with a yes and got right up in this guy's face. The guy said, I F hate FS and shoved Radu. The girlfriend got in the lax bro's face, as did her boyfriend. They both also got shoved back, boyfriend shoved into girlfriend, to be precise, and the lax bro smirked as they fell over. I F hate FS, he repeated as Radu struck. Wielding a pink umbrella, this skeleton of a man leapt at the lax bro and began to savagely beat him with the umbrella. The lax bro was not prepared and fell to his knees before quickly entering the fetal position. Radu continued to beat him until I pulled him off. They decided to go to another party and strutted away. The lax bro was still in the fetal position and bleeding profusely from a multitude of tiny cuts. Sadly, the umbrella was ruined and left to decay on our lawn. Masculinity destroyed, the lax bro still wanted to party and try to lay someone from our shirtless party. He was already quite drunk, but my roommates and I decided he needed to be hammered. We took turns pouring in drinks and chugging them with him until he refused to drink anymore. Everything got pretty blurry for me here, but I know we had a dance party and he eventually passed out shirtless on our couch. Being the vigilante badasses, TM, we are, we decided to cover him in Sharpie and then carry him up to the nearest friendly location. Little did we know that not all lacrosse players are friendly with each other and that he was from the school across the street's team, not ours. Regardless, we somehow got him onto the lacrosse house couch and left him there, blissfully unaware of how many cocks adorn his naked body. TLDR, homophobic bro gets beat down by umbrella-wielding flamer who was easily one quarter of his size and weight. We then proceed to get him pass out drunk and pawn him off on an even less friendly apartment of drunks. I probably have a million more stories from college slash that weekend. Off the top of my head, 
I recall a girl who grabbed every set of genitalia at that same party, getting campus safety called for launching rotten fruit at freshmen, and many more. Maybe later, though. Last April, I worked for a local brew fest. The first night I was working in admissions. This guy came up to buy more drink tickets, and upon seeing that he was a 20-something guy wearing a fanny pack, I asked about the pack. For the next 20 minutes he shared with me everything that was in all the pockets of his fanny pack, and why it was all so very important. My freshman year of college, I lived in a triple. One roommate never went out, while the other was rushing one of the frats on campus, so he was out almost every night. One Thursday, I decided to hit the hay early because I had a test and wanted some sleep. This meant 1 a.m. instead of 3. I lay there for almost an hour, unable to sleep, since my internal clock was wired to not be tired until 3. 3 o'clock rolls around, and I'm drifting off when my other roommate, the one rushing, comes stumbling into the room. Whatever, no worries, he's just going to sleep. He had a habit of talking in his sleep, but tonight was different. He kept repeatedly moaning the name of his big as if he was in pain. At 3.30, still haven't slept a wink, he gets out of bed, stands near the door, and throws up all the alcohol he drank. Nothing solid, all liquid, and we had tile floors, so it wasn't hard to clean up. After I wiped it up, I tried to get him into bed, he had a top bunk, by the way, and was not very coordinated when sober, making it damn near impossible for him to get up when he was drunk, but he instead decided he needed to take a walk. I let him go, but about 20 minutes later, he hadn't come back. I walked down the hall to the girl's wing, co-ed dorm, and found one of them with their door open and all the lights on. Before I could even ask if they had seen him, one of the girls starts going off, you need to control him, you can't let him get drunk, blah blah blah, so I asked what the heck happened. Turns out, he let himself into one of the girls' rooms that had their doors unlocked, walked into their closet thinking it was a bathroom, and pissed all over their stuff. I'm torn between laughing hysterically and being horrified by his actions, so I grab him before the girls drag him to the hall director. It's about 4, I'm at this point, and I still have to get up for my test in about 5 hours. When I finally got him in his bed, he says, I think I'm gonna be sick, so I grab him a bucket, and he promptly throws up all over the floor. I cleaned him up, once again, told him he owes me big time, and went to bed at 5. Woke up the next morning and aced the test. TLDR freshman your roommate throws up in room twice, pees in random girl's closet, I ace test on 4 hours of sleep. I was at a friend's house for a low get together, maybe 12 people in total. We all start playing drinking games, taking shots together, general party like things to do. Around 2 am, one of our friends go missing. We start freaking out and searching the house. We can't find him anywhere inside the house, so we look in his backyard and around the front of the house to see if he was out for a smoke. Nope, nowhere. Then my drunk ass sobers up for a second and I decide to check the bathroom. Sure enough, he is in there, passed out mid s. drunk me thinks this is the funniest thing that ever could be, so I call everyone up to the bathroom to look at him. Our even drunker friend, thinks it would be funny to mess with him, so he runs in and drop kicks him off the toilet. Best part of the story is that there was a large piece of poo sticking halfway out of his ass. TLDR roommate would mysteriously show up at door mostly, sometimes fully naked, mystery finally was answered with much flopping and falling. This was back during my sophomore year of college. My roommate, let's call him Ungraceful Nude, or UN for short, was pledging at his fraternity, so he oftentimes would get back to the dorm at strange hours, and RS faced. Well, one night I'm sound asleep and there's a frantic pounding on our door. My other roommate gets to the door first and flings it open, there's UN standing at the door in only his briefs. My roommate turns his head to look at me, I'm still laying in my bunk, and before either of us can question what had happened, UN blurts out, I don't want to talk about it. The next morning, we confronted UN about it, but he refused to believe it. He thought we were pulling an elaborate con on him. We gave a mess for a few days, but eventually we moved on. Later on in that week, UN is again at his frat late. We all hit the hay, both myself, my other roommate, and my suite mates. The suite is two rooms connected via a bathroom. Things, seemingly, pass without issue as UN is asleep in his bed the next morning. I stop by the other room to see if anyone wants to grab some food and one of my sweet mates gleefully starts recapping last night. Apparently, UN had shown up at their door, once again in his boxers. This time when we tell UN, he believes us, because even I wouldn't pull such a long con. He's a bit embarrassed and confused as to what happened. Since he has no recollection we have no idea what leads to his clothes coming off and how far he travels without clothes on. There was a third incident where he was banging on our door while totally nude. It's getting really ridiculous at this point and we're all extremely curious as to what is going on. Finally, I came down with the flu. I turned in early one night while everyone went out. 
At some ungodly hour, I was awoken to UN, fully clothed, stumbling into the post of my bed. It jarred me awake, I shook away the sleep and NyQuil haze and watched as events unfolded. I knew as it was happening, all of my questions were going to be answered if I didn't disturb UN. He started peeling off his layers. He momentarily got caught in a shirt, but victoriously threw it off after a 30 second struggle. He continued undressing and as he took his pants off, he of course, stumbled. I'll never forget this scene. My bed was parallel along one wall and lofted above my desk. His bed was directly across from me. He was in between the two beds, so I was watching him in profile. As he stumbled, he pivoted on his left leg as he fell backward in a clockwise direction, penis flopping about freely. At seemingly the last second, he threw up his right hand and caught himself on my bed frame, a good three inches from my face. I did my best to stifle my laughter and the course of events continued upon their original path. After a quick rebuke, F pants. UN had successfully vanquished his most ardent foe and was completely naked. He looked around the room, hands on hips, and then sat down on a chair facing the TV. He turned it on, and an infomercial flickered on across the screen. At this point, I'm doubting the answer to our mystery will be solved, but I, at least, was treated to some riotous laughter coming from UN as he let out a peal of maniacal laughter. I'm not sure if the infomercial tickled him just right or if he was recounting some earlier event. After his laughter subsided, he abruptly stood up and looked around. I held my breath as I was afraid he had become aware of my presence. The seconds hung like hours before finally, he bolted for the door. He ran out somewhere into the hallway and unleashed a far too familiar sound somewhere off in the distance. You see, Yulin has a rather weak constitution and well, I could hear what sounded like Randy Marsh puking. Questions finally answered. Yulin would come home, disrobe, and then sprint out to puke in the hallways, not sure why he wouldn't go to the bathroom, which was on the way out. It's a wonder he never ran into anyone else. Admittedly it was a little bit of a letdown. We had hoped it had been a series of really poor one night stands, but I'll never be able to forget watching Yuan falling and flopping about as his pants got the better of him. Oh god, too many. He ain't barking off of the rail of a penthouse. Shattered on the ground 100 plus feet below. Police came and tried to break up the party. Too drunk to understand why it didn't get broken up. Same party, drunkenly climbed up the spire of the building. And got stuck. Same party, got in a fight when a drunk friend, with about 60 pounds of muscle on me, tried to give me a naked hug. Ended up on the floor in front of the girl who was throwing the party. She was pee at me for a while. At a party in HS at a rich kid's house while his parents were supposed to be out of town. Police come to break it up, and I don't want to get ID'd, so I try to drunkenly climb up this waterfall thing that goes into his neighbor's yard. Fall off the waterfall, get soaked in the huge koi pond thing underneath. Police were only there to tell us to quiet down a bit. When I'm partying for another two hours. And in my friend's opinions, my funniest. At a party. Drunkest I'd ever been, one bottle of vodka. Barely functioning. Walking around the front hall of the house when my friend comes up to me and goes, Pasta, up the stairs, first right, move now. I'm too drunk to think about what the F I'm doing, so I run up the stairs. There's a kid at the top of the stairs trying to stop me, trying to convince me to calm down and go downstairs, F that S, I throw him down, he was fine. Barge in the door end. The hottest girl in school and my friend, completely naked on the floor. And the part that will forever live in infamy. Like I said, I'm drunk as F. So when I see them on the floor, I have no idea what to do. So I stand there and stare. They stop, roll over, and start waving, like hello waving, not get the F out waving. I wave back. They wave again. I keep staring and wave back. This goes on for like 30 seconds, until my first friend who sent me upstairs gets me and drags me away. Another friend got pee drunk at yet another party. Went to go throw up in the bathroom, and the door got stuck. He waited for a half hour for someone to help him get it open. Then he kicked down the door, and walked around partying with the door for the rest of the night. I'm sure I have more, but it's 2am. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.